good. All right, next guest, Mitch Georgiades. Mitch obviously left uh, last year from Hale um, and made his AFL debut last Saturday. And there's been, he has really kind of fascinating, interesting story about his time at Hale and then, you know, what's taken place in the last three or four months. So I'm here with Chris Gard again. We're going to kind of pick Mitch's brains here and uh, while he's back home here in Perth, just trying to wait this coronavirus situation out. So welcome, Mitch. Thanks for giving us a little bit of time this afternoon. No worries. All right, Mitch, I'll, um, I'll make a start. Um, obviously, you are a, a key member of the swim team as well when you're at school. Yeah. But um, as part of, uh, obviously, your time throughout Hale and obviously with commu- um, community sport as well, you, clearly footy was one of them. I've just mentioned swimming. What other sports did you kind of get yourself involved in? Um, yes, obviously, footy um, from a young age. Um, been swimming where, where I tried to try and drown, but um, wasn't too bad. Uh, did a little bit of athletics um, growing up, um, as well as cricket. So I played cricket up until year 11. Um, and then from there, just been focusing on footy recently, but love to still get out and go uh, for a swing. Uh, Port Adelaide actually has a cricket team, um, so try to get into that as much as I can. Um, and I, I did notice well, I had a pre-season game, Mitch, and you weren't invited to play. So clearly the standard... <laughs> You know, and your standards have slipped a little bit from your time here. Like it's true, though. You you weren't you weren't invited to play. You you weren't in that team, were you? No, I was not. I was not invited. I didn't cut the invite for that anymore. Okay. Oh, bad luck. Um, so I mean, playing hail sport. I mean, many highlights, I'm sure, throughout your time at hail. But what was the uh, sort of single sporting win that you were uh, might have been involved in that was sort of a highlight for you? Um, oh, I reckon it'd have to be when I won the first. My first Alco, or my only Alco, um, when I was in Year 10 um, against Trinity um, at Hale at the final game uh, to seal the, seal the deal. That was the, the biggest game and my favourite sporting moment at Hale uh, to be in Year 10. That was pretty special to, to get one of those um, with pretty with a pretty good team and um, along with the swimming championships, of course, that was pretty special. Yeah, um, nice. Um, I'm moving to house sport, what about sort of best memory um, for, for house sport? Obviously, you're a Tregoning boy. Um, you know, talk us through the, the sort of best house sporting memories you've got. Um, I loved house footy. House footy was so fun, um, especially when I played against like Callan England. And I remember Kellen Johnson actually shutting down Callan England, who was an AFL player at the time, or about to be, become. That was pretty special. And then uh, Tregoning didn't win too much. Um, which at the time, so it wasn't a huge amount of success. But uh, um, what else would we do? We did all right in the cricket, um, and swimming wasn't too bad, I think, as well. We had Harry Saggers and a couple of the big boys. Yeah, okay. All right, talk us um, so through draft night. I mean, you know, can you tell us the circumstances about how you found out that you were selected? You know, where were you? What did it feel like at the time? And maybe, you know, for the next half hour, 45 minutes after that. Yeah, so the AFL draft spread out over two nights, um, over a Wednesday and a Thursday. Oh, three nights, actually. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the first round of the first 20-something players had taken on the first night. So I sort of came into the, the, the night, the first day, thinking there was a possibility that um, I could be picked up, sort of 50-50 chance. Um, and I was just sitting at home with mum and my sister, um, and we are just sitting in the TV room. I sort of turned all my phone off and put away everything, I was pretty nervous and um, couldn't really sit still, bouncing around the house. Um, and then as the draft got, and then about a minute before my name actually got called out, I got a got a call from someone and I thought I might as well answer. Like I, I hadn't answered my phone all day or all afternoon. And I thought I might, might answer it and see who it is. And um, it was Ken Hinckley, the Port Adelaide coach. And he said, look, Mitch, we're, um, we'd like to take you the next pick, pick if that's okay. And um, from then it was, yeah, Name was called out about a minute later, which was pretty exciting. And then all my mates had about 15 mates sitting in the car around the corner, and they were um, all over with some wine within about five seconds, which is very good, um, very exciting. And then family came around as well. Um, had all the family. We had just had a had a nice night in. Um, lots of lots of calls, lots of texts, and lots of messages from everyone, which was really nice. And um, yeah, it was a pretty pretty exciting night. Yeah, that's probably you know, that's probably the first step of this dream you're living at the moment and um so probably there not long after you, you got on a plane moved to adelaide and i know you probably you probably spoke to a few players or texts or and, and phone calls but that first day when you walked into the premises to meet them face to face like there's names like jonas boat motlop wines 
Dixon Westoff, like some big names there. Just talk us through, you know, in, on the inside, how nervous you were walking into the to meet people face to face on day one. Yeah, I was absolutely um, crapping myself, to be honest. Um, I walked in and I had a couple of calls from a couple of the players before, but um, it sort of didn't, doesn't really feel real until you sort of get there. And then um, I sort of walked in the club the first day and the likes of, you know, like Charlie Dixon, who's 205 centimetres and 110 kilos, comes up to you and says, well done. And you're sort of like pinching yourself. Just It still doesn't feel like it. You feel like a little kid at one of those footy cl- clinics around, um, around like when you're young and... Um, but it was, yeah, I, I don't know. It felt like even for the first three weeks, it sort of just felt like a, a footy camp, I guess. And sort of, it doesn't really sink in until you come back after Christmas. And that's the period from then on you realise, well, this is what I'm doing from a job from now on. And this is the people I'm, I'm surrounding myself with and um, hopefully play alongside. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the last week, there's something, I mean, I thought everyone in society almost can't believe what's happening. But I think your week's been, you know, and you'll remember it for the rest of your life, that you you hadn't played an AFL game and we uh, a week ago and we all watched you last weekend make your debut. Now, before the game, we saw a little bit of footage. We couldn't hear any audio. You would have you got given your jersey from someone. Can you tell me who that was and maybe anything you remember from what they told you when, the, when you got handed your jersey? Um, yeah, so it was the captain, Tom Jonas, uh, which is very exciting. And um, he's got an amazing story as well. He came from being a, a rookie player on the, on the list um, to becoming... Uh, the captain of the football club, which is pretty special. And I guess I've got on quite well with him and sort of similar, not similar stories, but he's come from being behind and then come up to be the captain. It's sort of similar to my year last year where I didn't play footy and then now uh, to play my first game of AFL footy, which is pretty exciting. Um, but in terms of what he said, he, um, he was just um, excited and just said nothing really changes. It's just another game of footy and hopefully um, you'll be alongside for for a long, long period of time, and um, that boys will do everything for you as long as you do everything for them, and um, just keep keep going the way you've sort of been going, and um, go from there. Awesome, awesome, mate. Um, now that first goal, like you had to stretch a little bit for the mark, would have put a bit of pressure on those hamstrings of yours, um, but you got it. You, you probably didn't look to offload it. You just turned around and like I'm kicking this through the middle. But when you're walking back. What was going through your head? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're about 30 out, roughly in front. And don't give me any cliches here, Mitch. What What are you thinking walking back at the Adelaide Oval? Oh, sorry, you're in the Gold Coast. Sorry, no fans there. Yeah. But what's um, what's what's going through your head there, buddy? Uh, a lot of things. Um, for anyone that knows my footy capability, set shots have never really been my cup of tea. Um, so I've always struggled in those sort of regards, and I've done a lot of work over the summer to. Still didn't feel very confident. So when I was walking backwards, I said, kick, you know you should kick. But um, I, I wasn't backing myself, to be honest, Yeah, um, which is yeah. not ideal. But, um, yeah. How about the um, second shot at goal you had? Yeah, the second shot at goal, that's probably more like my normal set. <laughs> <laughs> Out of bounds in the pool. Um, oh, yeah. no, it was all good, mate. All good. Now, was there a moment in that game, and I'm thinking like a collision or a hit where you just saw, wow, I'm – this is real. These are adults. These are big boys. Like, was there some contest you went at and just went, oh, this is different here. This is awesome. Um, well, after I kicked my first goal, uh, one of the, my opponent pushed me over just on the ground, just waiting for the next set of bounce, and I realised that uh, they're pretty strong boys. And then in the final quarter, I think I got, I got cleaned up um, by, by, I don't know who it was, to be honest. Um, and that, that put me on the ground for a bit. So I saw that. Still, yeah, he still, stayed there yeah. a bit. He stayed there a bit, didn't you? We trying to get a free kick. Um, yeah, yeah. I was trying to get the fifty, and I was, I was <laughs> walking towards the goal screen. And I'm I said, no, come back. So, <laughs> yeah, <I> was, <laughs> Gold. Now um, it didn't quite work. Yeah, yeah. As you know, um, Hale, we we talk a, a fair bit about being a team player. So in your three or four months with Port Adelaide, who who's someone you've seen and just saw? Oh, my goodness, this guy's just at a different level in terms of his unselfishness, his team first mentality. Like, who who would that be, and and why? I think you can't go past our captain. Our captain, Tom Jonas, is um, the epitome of that. And he's not probably the most silkiest player. He's not your um, your most refined sort of player that does all the cool stuff, kicks goals from the boundaries, takes hangers. But he's just hard hitting. Um, just puts his body body on the line every time. And, he expects we expect that from him, and he expects that from us. So um, he leads from the front in terms of that. And, uh, brutal is the word he he likes to describe um, the way he does it. So 
in terms of that, he's just um, he drives the, the force behind. I think everyone sets the tone. Um, even though he's not the most um, flashy player, he just goes out there every day and you know exactly what you're going to get from him um, and you can't complain. Uh, Mitch, obviously you, you've mentioned that you played cricket up to year 11 and you, know, you missed footy in year 12 as well. I mean, that was, for those who don't know, that was obviously injury related. Um, that was a fair sort of speed bump in your sort of pathway, I suppose. Um, do you want to talk us through that and maybe give any of the boys who are you know, finding they're reaching their own little hiccups and those sorts of things along the way, um, sort of some strategies that you use to get through that time? Uh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, last year I missed the whole whole year due to, due to an injury. And early on, you sort of, um, you, lots of thoughts go through your mind. Well, is this the last um, game of footy potentially? Is this, am I not going to get drafted? Uh, lots of thoughts generally throw th- flow through your head. head. Uh, but, I sort of just, what I try to do is just to focus on what I could do rather than what I couldn't. And um, there's always stuff that you can be doing. That's probably the biggest thing I took out of it. Despite I, I wasn't able to run and I wasn't able to use my legs very often. Um, there's always stuff, whether it was in the gym, um, whether I went for swims, I was down in the pool in the morning, um, hassling uh, Mr. Bow to, to be allowed to use the pool. Um, uh, just anything in regards to that. I, I made the promise to myself before I... Or when I found out that I got injured, I wouldn't be playing. That I'd come back stronger than than what I was, and I put I put ten kilos on, um, and I ran a faster two k than I've ever, ever run before. So uh, probably the biggest thing for anyone that's bored right now and not sure quite as to what what happens next in terms of things. There's there's always stuff that you can be doing, whether it's just around the house, like um, just having a foot in your hand or whatever sport you're playing cricket and just throwing a ball around off the net, off the wall, um, even just make a little circuit for yourself on the grass outside and um, just keep yourself somewhat fit. Um, and just also another thing is just to stay connected with people. Like as much as we might be going through some hard times and be isolating from each other, you, you still got to stay connected, whether that's just a cheeky group chat where you just have some banter, just something along those lines. I think for me last year, it was uh, very important to stay connected with everyone and um, just to main, maintain that sort of connection between my players, my family, um, and everyone around me as well. I reckon that's some great advice that a, a lot of the boys can really, um, yeah, really pick up from, mate. So yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> um, and obviously, you've only been out for a um, a couple of months. You'll you'll know full well that the uh, borders pie day is on a Tuesday, and that, that goes for staff as well. Um, there's some interesting techniques of eating pies that we've noticed around, especially from the um, the borders. You know, removing lids and some sauce inside, eating with knife and fork. I mean, some have given excuses that they have to be doing that because it's uh, eating on the run. How does Mitch Georgiades eat a pie? Um, I take the lid off the pie. Um, so I take the lid off the pie and put sauce in. We've got to end this. Um, We're good, Mitch. <laughs> We've got to go, mate. Uh, you put it, put it on and then eat it. And then, um, yeah, eat it from there and then eat the pastry after. Why wouldn't the sauce go on the top? Because it's... Uh, I don't know, it's not meant to be on the top. The top comes off, the top's the best part, so you eat it. Um, but surely, if it, was, if it was meant to be in the middle, the pie makers would put it in the middle already, wouldn't they? They do. You're okay. tripping. No, they don't, because it's an <laughs> accessory. Anyway. So I, I always went by the, um, the old worst things first. So you're telling me that you'd save the lid and you'd eat that last because it's the best. Is that right? Yeah, so, yeah, save the best for last. Yeah, okay. All right, you've got a lot of growing up to do, Mitch. Uh, pr- <laughs> appreciate it, mate. Thanks. And make sure you and the family stay well the next weeks and months. And uh, hopefully whenever round two comes, mate, you're back out there doing what you did last week. We're all – a lot of kids here want to be you. I hope you realise that. And, uh, you know, and best of luck for the rest of the season and stay safe. Yeah, thank you very much. You guys do. All right. Thanks, Mitch. See you, mate. See you. See you later. All right.